Hi, Wen, we're back and uh, it's, it's going to be one of those amazingly fun days. We love doing something different, uh, having all these exciting new bits of technology that we've never used before and uh, try them out for the first time live. Yeah, brilliant. Um, so I'm really privileged to have Jane Briscoe Price join us today. Jane has been a customer of ours for 20 years. Can you believe it, Jane? It's amazing. And, and Jane is one of the early adopters back in film days when we first started our business here in the UK. Um, Jane has been through all of the ups and downs of the business. Business, um, from the switch from film to digital and everything along its way and throughout that Jane has managed to build some incredible businesses not just one but several uh, in the world of photography and Jane's going to share so many of the different um, ways that she created a successful business and, and specifically how to improve your average order value for your wedding sales. Um, Jane good morning how are you? Morning I'm good thank you very much thanks for inviting me it's, it's an honour to uh have the graphic hat on today that's good <laughs> well you know what it's um it's an exciting day we we've got a lot to get on with so um i'm gonna let you do all the talking and then if there's any questions that people have got and they post them into facebook or or wherever then then i'll ask those towards the end so um thank you for joining us and um i'm gonna let you i'm gonna let you do your amazing things and then we'll have a little catch up in a short while thanks all Sarah. right okay thank you well I think um, it's been such a difficult year, or well, certainly 12 months, and the next few months, all I see on forums is people saying, oh God, I need an associate tutor, or oh, can someone cover this wedding, or oh God, I'll have five inquiries for the same date, which made me recognise how so many photographers, they're great photographers, but they're missing a trick, because if they could be at three weddings, earning three times the amount they would, but they can't, so why not stop selling digital files and releasing both your control over the quality of what's reproduced and how it's reproduced, if it is reproduced at all, and actually double up what you can earn by just shooting on one wedding. So on those days when you're turning weddings down, you could be doubling your wage with just that one. Yeah, and I've noticed, I'm sorry, Jane, it's one yeah. of the things I didn't mention actually, is that we we still see that there's a huge number of photographers that are shooting and supplying files only. Um, and I think this is one of the key things for, for many photographers to understand, how, you know, how you can actually really make some serious money by not, by selling more than just files. So that's, so that's kind of the key parts of your talk today, isn't it? <laughs> It is. I mean, in the 20 years I've been working professionally full time, I have never done this only shoots. Not for portraiture, not for boudoir, and certainly not for weddings. So I might not shoot 70 weddings in a year, but that's great because I might shoot 35, but I'm still making the same money as someone shooting 70. But I've got a bit more of a life at the weekends, and that allows me to do my other photography elements, which is portraiture and the equine business. So what I wanted to sort of really cover was was why it is better and I've really drummed down the figures I'm not I'm not a figures person you know I'm not an accountant but when you take out let's say an average disc only wedding is 1400 pounds now there's people out there shooting 500 pounds and there's people maybe shooting two grand weddings on disc only but let's say 1400 is is a mean average but you don't, you're not getting £1,400 for that wedding. You've got your VAT, your tax, your insurance, your second tutor potentially. You've got the cost of making and acquiring that business, whether it's commission to your venue, whether it's sample albums, whether it's attending wedding shows, large ones, two grand for a wedding show. You know, when you do the GMEX in Manchester or you do the London ones, it's £2,000. So you are not making £1,400 out of that wedding you are probably working for about 800, 900 pounds by the time you've taken all your costs, your time for post-image preparation. So you're on less than 100 pounds an hour, which is still a lovely figure. But wouldn't it be nice to be working for double that or even a bit more? Um, you're also giving away the rights to your imagery and the way it's used, the way they're shared. You know, and we've all seen pictures where people have actually put horrific filters on, on the images and you just you just want to cry because you know probably intrinsically they're a great photographer and they've got great skills and it was a great image. But your client who is not an artist, they might be an accountant or they might work in Sainsbury's or they might, you know, work in a travel agency, they don't have a visual eye. 
and they don't understand the concept of a story and a storyline. And as you shoot a wedding, you should be shooting for that flow and for that story. So when you produce an album like these, and there's hundreds in here, you are telling that story and you're shooting it on the day in mind. So the first thing I do is we always offer a pre-wedding shoot. Um, at the pre-wedding meeting, we talk about weddings all the time. I'm sorry, about albums all the time. We refer to them and say, well, this is what we can do this. And, oh, yeah, it's got a great arch rate. This was one at a different place, but this is what we do. So albums are always in hand when you're having any consultation. Then we offer pre-wedding shoot. And the reason we do that is, one, it gets them to know me, me to know them. It makes my day easier on the day, but also they come back and have an in-person viewing. So we're already training them in a way to how they will select imagery. They are not going home with a, with a proof album. They're not seeing them on an online gallery where dad's gonna say, oh, I don't like your nose on that. Mum's gonna say, oh, I don't like your smile on that one and pull them down. We wanna build it up. So they come to here to my office and we do a pre-wedding, uh, so a pre-wedding shoot viewing. And I would say 95% of the time, I upsell from that. So I'm already covering the cost of something that has been given as a complimentary. So probably my average sale there is about 350. It could be a framed um, signed for picture. It can be a, set, a collection of prints that they can mount um, because I will sell prints, but in a collection. Um, and that's how we work on from there. And do you, do, you do, do you do signing books from time to time from those photo apps as well? Yeah, we do. We do signing books as well. Um, and they prove quite popular because, again, it's something that it's visual. People can relate to it. Um, so, yeah, signing books, sign four frames, um, collections on the wall. And weirdly, I had to do some Zoom, Zoom viewings, um, obviously before Christmas when we weren't allowed to view properly. And my sales didn't drop. In fact, they actually went up, which was just, I think they went up because the couple had postponed weddings, so they had more available cash. So I did sort of three or four sales that were like six, seven hundred pounds, which is still profit on something that was given for free. When we do the pre-wedding plan, the meeting just before the wedding, I book in their personal wedding viewing for the day after they return from honeymoon. Or in the instance last week, I did a wedding last Friday, they viewed yesterday. So we've got them on that lovely high, that lovely wedding bubble. They haven't seen endless discs and USBs of, of you know, guests and relatives pictures that have quashed down and limited the enjoyment. They're seeing pretty much their wedding images straight away. And they come here and we set that date well in advance so they're in literally the day after their honeymoon return or the day after the wedding sort of, you know, gap. Um, what we do is make it a very special occasion. So again, like the personal viewing of the pre-shoot, we do a, a lovely um, picnic style lunch. We do champagne, they snuggle up and the first thing they see is a slideshow of all the images put to music. I lead them to it and I literally hear them laughing, crying, howling, because they don't have any concept of what we shot. So you're maximizing the effect that the imagery and the moment you've captured has on them. And that's really important. Um, it also means that it keeps you very focused on your cash flow. You're not waiting a year before you get a proof album back. You're not sending them off with a disc and saying, well, make a choice as and when. You've got a really, really focused time to, to get this sorted. Um, so let's say we start off probably, I do it on the screen, so they watch the slideshow, which is about 45 minutes, and then we go through them the same method as we do the pre-shoot. So everything has already been a trial run. They're used to this system. And we might start off with 850, 900 images with two shooters all day. Um, and that will hone down first run, we'll fill it down to maybe 400. And the second will maybe get it down to about 250, 200, 250. And then I stop and I say, just don't worry, you've done really well. Well, let's look at albums. And then we completely put the, I put the screen off and we look at the albums. Um, I offer 
I offer now probably the three sizes, 20 by 30, 25, 35, and 30 by 40. I think I'm going to do another 40 by 50 album. It did do me so well a long time ago when I first started with Graphy. Um, I remember going to a wedding show and putting it out on display. And photographers were coming and said, got to see this album that everyone's talking about. All these brides are talking about this album. And it did probably get me an amazing amount of weddings. So I'm going to do the best of album very soon. Um, so that's what we do. We talk about the albums, the covers, the style, the layout, the fact that they're all lined. Um, I tend not to tell them they can redesign a box because I actually like to, to include that as a little bit of an extra gift. I think if you can maximise those little moments, whether it's with mini books, whether it's with parent books, whether it's lining it, or whether it's you know putting it in a designer box, it's just it's just the icing on the cake when you hand over that album, and you know when they're parting with a lot of money. So we talk about the albums and and get a preference. I usually go off and make coffee while lazily like holding them and finding out which one they like, the style of, the layout. I tend to be an all upright girl, but I do have. I've just got a young movie book, um, book uh, horizontal, and another one there because I think it's it's good to show them. But I, this is my preference. And then we go back to the Albert to the image selection and say, okay, so you can imagine those four confetti shots we've narrowed it down to will go like this: three on this page, one large one here. This is how it will flow. And I talk to them about how I see their selection of images living in an album. And they understand them, they can translate, you know, whereas if you just have them on an online gallery or your thumbnail proof book or on a disc to choose at home, you will never get that understanding of the design process and storybook process, which is vital to this next element. So I, everyone prices differently. Uh, a 20, 20 by 30 album I have as a, a base, and this I think is probably going to be popular for maybe COVID weddings where they're a little bit more limited in numbers. Um, 25 images. I sell images, not sides, because I feel, gosh, sorry, I've got um, That's five images, but it's two sides. But how do they know, you know, that's two sides, but it's two images. You know, there's a lot of reflection there. So I sell by the image. 25 images in this size is 500 pounds. Any cover, any paper, any layout, any style, doesn't matter, that's how it is. Um, and the 25 or 35 with 50 images is 950 pounds, that's it. It doesn't matter what cover or color, I've priced it at pretty much top end, so whatever they have, there's plenty of workable profit. So let's say they have the 25, 35 with 50 images. There's 950 pounds, but we've got it to 200 images. So to 175 images, for instance. So that at 10 pounds an image over takes that album to 2,200 pounds. Okay, so it's 1250 for the additional 125 images, 950 for the album, 2,200. I will then say to them, if we lose images, it's 10 pounds an image. But I really don't want to. So I'll round it down maybe to £2,000, and, and that album will then be £2,000 with all their selection. And they know that they've got to lose beyond 20 to start making a difference in the price at this point. And then, and then of course, Jane, the, um, the, the, the cost extra for you, apart from the design time, is only the cost of the extra pages, isn't it? Which is, yeah. around, you know, as we know, is. Well, we don't talk too much about um, cost prices on because we're actually live out to the public everywhere. But the cost for the pages compared to what you're charging for the page is really only your cost is your time in, in, in design and the cost for the page. So, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's the best way to make the most profit is increasing the number of pages in your albums. Yeah, it is. I mean, I, I actually pay to have the images retouched. Um, I have three people that retouch in the UK. They're people I know. And people have worked with for in excess of eight years. The reason I don't retouch them, and by retouch, we are not talking, you know, fake, smooth to within an inch of their life, but we are talking um, 
a slight double chin or a bit of a crease here or a baggy arm or you know fire exit signs that you really cannot help you know in the venue you know you've got a lovely wide shot you've got a fire exit sign all of that's included their color balance and i actually pay a pound an image so um and the reason I, they literally clean them up tie them up balance them i will then do perhaps another 10 percent to a few pictures you know um the wedding i did last friday um the groom is quite a lot paler than the bride he'll be warmed up a little bit and balanced um she's a little bit worried about her arms they'll be nipping on the odd one that's not flattering so that there is a consistency right the way through that album where they look good they're color balanced luckily i now work with second shooters that were on the same camera um, system so that way at least there isn't that whole difference of profiling because when you've got sony and fuji or canon and nikon they, they do look different and it's a much harder balance so by the time you get then to your album the the digital files come back to me the retail files come back to me i design it because i feel i was there it might take i know people can use fundy and fundy seems very popular i am a little bit more I don't know. I'm just so used to using the software that Graphic Produce, and I like it because it flows and it sits with what I've got. It's not as boxy as maybe Fundy might be. And my clients have booked these albums, therefore I design it. But basically, you've got the cost of your album plus any retouch time if you farm it out and your time to design. But you are well, well, well into four figure profit. Um, you know, I think it's important to try and add a little bit of extra value. So I include little ones in it, or I might, as a gift, or I might have done a promotion at a wedding show where if you book today, you might get two parents' albums and eight mini ones. I'll include them. So obviously I've got those in my cost, but that's in my booking cost anyway. So I think the profit margin on your albums can be more, way more than your profit on your shoot. So why put all that time and effort into getting the clients in the first place and then losing all opportunity to present the very, your work the very best way you can and double up the profit? And that's my philosophy, really. <laughs> I can't hear you, let, let, let me ask you. Let me ask you a few questions. Let me ask yeah. you a few questions, Jane. So um, every single one of your customers has actually had an album? Yes, every single one. So in over the last every, 20 years and they're all graphic cool and even though they've seen the photographs in the slideshow when you've helped them choose the right ones to go on to design the album so that means what you were saying earlier is that it means that you're not actually having to wait weeks months years for them to come back to you uh, at a later date to, to be able to design the album you're controlling it from the very beginning you're giving them the the, the guidance of what's going to make the great picture so once you've done that, you then design the album and then it's at that chance that you, you, you give them that chance to actually even have more in the album. Is that, was that right? Did I, understand I, that? I don't. Once they, sorry, just let me move to me here. Sorry. It's me got in the way. Sorry. Once I have, um, I think that there's an amazing amount of trust that you build up with your clients over the period of time from their initial booking. I'm definitely not a remote book, see you on the day girl. And I think that's, again, where so many people can leave themselves wide open to poor interpretation because we all like, they, all our clients were using the word repertoire or relax. But so many people, yeah. look at my, I, don't, I don't want to be posed. I don't like posed yeah, pictures. You know. But I like all these. And you yeah, say, yeah, but yeah, I've had input yeah. in all of those yeah. poses. Oh, so, so you want me to leave your double chins and your flappy arms and all the things, <laughs> of course, that nobody's got them at all. They, you know, they never appear in anybody's photos because they're not posed. You know. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, there's that. You have to find that very, very fine line. Oh, we've got Paul joining us here. Hi, Paul. Sorry. <laughs> 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 that was Paul's... a bit premature, wasn't it? <laughs> <Yeah>. Bye. <laughs> Paul's, 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 Paul's joining us uh, with his weekend name, Louise. Um, yes. uh, <laughs> Paul's joining us shortly for another talk. So um, we, yeah. we're, 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 just, uh, we're just having a few technical glitches on how we work this whole, this whole live from the... Yeah, from they're the quite UK. tight together, I think. Yeah, time. they are, they are. So, um, so, so 
what this means then is you haven't got people sitting waiting. Your cash flow works better. It yeah. gives you a far, far better way of actually managing your business. You get to upsell to everybody. They buy so much more than they would have done if you just left them. And in fact, because everybody's got an album, they, you know, they've got that family heirloom as well. What, what about the when they actually the collect the thing. album? What about when they collect the album? How, is, how does that, uh, you know, oh, how does that feel? You know, it's so, you know they, are, they are your friends. By the time you've gone through this process, you've spent a great many hours with them. You have got to, yeah, some clients you will, you'll hand the album over. It's, it's an end of a cycle. That's that. Others, you know, we'll keep in touch with you for years to come, you know, and, and that's lovely. So we always make sure there's fees. I mean, obviously lockdown's been difficult. I've only done two weddings in 17 months or 16 months. So I was a bit nervous last but you, did, you did some small weddings, didn't you? I've just done no. two, that's it. Just done two, but just out of point of fact, hang on. Here's what I prepared earlier. <laughs> this was COVID wedding, 30 guests, and they had 185 images in their album. Wow. Now, and they loved it. So, so we, we're, what we're trying to help people here is people who've not really sold albums and to give people the chance to understand how you can make more from their albums. Mm -hmm. but, we've, but we've also, I know, uh, you know, during, during the whole lockdown period, I was giving people some tips and tricks on how to generate some revenue during lockdown. Now, for those that had never sold albums, pick up the phone and speak to your customer. And we're going to talk to Paul Toman about that in a second, about how he generated some amazing cash flow. But you actually flipped that, didn't you? You flipped that. So you phoned yeah. all your customers. Tell me more about that. We've got a few minutes just to, um, okay. before we finish up, and we may have a few questions to ask. But, uh, but just tell me a little bit more about how you flipped that in the reverse side. Yeah, well, I think I, you know, I think everybody got to it and started to screen clean their computers and redo their offices and so on and so forth. So I made an approach to my past clients and offered them the digital files as a security okay. and just so they'd got them. And you know, they were most of them wanted to buy their album images, so Paris album images. Some wanted the whole set because you know, five years on. Auntie Betty might have left this earth or, you know, granddad's, you know, not looking too good. And they wanted that. I think the beginning of lockdown, certainly everybody became very family orientated. They wanted to cover that that they loved around them. So I offered the sale of that and, and that gave me a great cash flow for the first few months when we all thought we'd be shooting weddings back in, you know, yeah. <laughs> in September, yeah. October. But going back to workflow and, and cash flow, yeah, from, so if the wedding is, say, the 1st of March, they will view their images on the 16th of March. They will be back from retouch on the 20th of March, and then the album will be designed by the 22nd of March, and it will go to Graphy. So it will be back for the 1st of May. So wedding 1st of March, album's in their hands about 1st to the 5th of May, and the money's in the bank. Because it's one of the things that I've certainly come across as a number of photographers who have had a lot of albums sitting in the wings waiting to supply. Um, and unfortunately, they've already spent the money from the client. And yeah. so they're in a catch-22 situation where they don't have the money to pay for the album that the client's already paid them for. And that's a tragic thing to do, you know, to be in that situation. So hopefully we can help people to get, get through that too. So, um, so, so actually then, you know, did you find that phoning those clients reconnected you in a way that enabled them to think about other work? Because I know you do horses, you do pets, you do all sorts of other photography mm -hmm. rather, than, rather than portraiture, rather than just wedding. So did that reconnect you with some of those clients you know, yeah, with, that, with those phone calls? I mean, I'd, I'd also moved premises in July 17 and downsized because I just didn't want to have four staff and huge overheads. So it was, an, it was a nice way of reminding them that I um, do other things, to say hello. I, I initially did it by email and then followed it up with a call when people said, oh, yeah, get in touch. You know, um, I let them know in the email how many images there were and rounded it up. So, and I let <laughs> the further, the longest distance since the shoot, so say 2010, they were a little bit cheaper than maybe 2016. But yeah, it, it, you know, it worked, it worked well. Um, and it gave me something that was sitting on a hard drive in a 
covered, it turned it into money. And that's when I think you should look at look at everything as a potential, yeah. not to police people, but to give the very, very best you can. And if that is designing an album and making it special and giving them something, not only that they've got for generations, but actually that album is going to be shown to the potential couples. How many people time time again. during the lockdowns, unfortunately, if they lost a loved one too during that time, be it through COVID or not through COVID, they weren't able to go to the funeral. They hadn't been able to see them. You know, exactly. you know the, the, uh, sadly, my dad died or uh, passed away last year. Fortunately, it wasn't during one of the lockdown periods and we were able to have a small funeral. But, you know, the, 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 the hundreds of people that stood outside in his village when they drove through and it shows if you can't see he didn't die from covid he was 96 years old and he had an yeah. amazing life but you know it was just amazing celebration to see those people standing outside but if you can't see and talk to your friends your family you know the close ones that you have the first thing you do is you go back to that album don't you, you go yeah, and look I mean, at those photographs april and may and june people were you know posting pictures all the time and i just think albums especially the graphic albums that are going to stand the test of time will be out on that table now but when when my clients have got babies you know and children grown up into 20 year old adults they'll be looking at those albums and those albums will still stand the test of time you know you just can't people think social media is the here and now it's right here it's right now and the other day i didn't get a wedding because they wanted digital files and that's fine i didn't want that wedding yeah. because I, as I said to him, you know, for all that you think you want the digital files, it's on social media. In three months' time, your friends will have gone to four of the weddings. Yeah. Your yeah. wedding will be old hat. It's, well, it's like, it, it's like I know during during the uh, uh, the first lockdown, we we did, I think it was something like thirty or so interviews. You were very kindly came along. Um, uh, and yeah, if I want to go and look at those now, I've got to search for those. They're not immediately apparent. You know, I do try and boost them up in our community, but so many great pieces of help that everybody gave during the first lockdown. Um, but it's the same with your photographs. Once they disappear onto social media, you know, where are they? You, know, you, have, you have no way of actually finding them. And when you've got, when you've got multiple hard drives, and, if, and worse still if they're, on, if they're on, a, on a phone and that gets lost and, and disappeared. So, um, and just, just quickly, just finishing off, tell us, uh, just whilst we're, whilst we're finishing off, you've also moved into, uh, into equine too. That's, uh, I know we're not here to talk about equine, but that's a bit of an exciting news. No way. Exciting. Oh, Paul's back. <laughs> back again. <laughs> <laughs> pause, pause back. Um, uh, uh, that's an exciting new pro, um, program for you, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I, I, my first passion was horses. My second was photography. So I think to have to have gone full and people. They're my third passion is people. So I think to be able to combine photography and people, amazing, great, love it, love it, love it. But now I've gone full circle. So now we photograph. Um, I set up a company called Spirit, Spirit Equine Photography, Spirit Equine Portugal, and it's fantastic. We photograph um, competition horses, people with their horses, because, you know, horses get to about 18, 19, and they start looking old, but they're such a big part yeah. of the family. So again, pictures on the wall, Portugal, but I've got to shoot this afternoon, actually, for, for a show jump on the British team. So, uh, right, so professional today, sports you know, person professional sports person you can you can you fantastic well listen jane thank you so much for giving us your time today um uh, we're we're managing the uh, the live glitches between the <laughs> between italy uk and we we add a third one into the mix a bit later on when we get to when we go to the usa too so it's going to be it's going to be a fun day thank you so much for sharing your tips um i know you do mentoring photographers um and and that's something which um which you you, you offer to help them with their business and your training so i know they can reach out to you directly uh, i guess on facebook or through your through your through your website if the, if somebody's interested in, in looking at business training from you that's correct isn't it of course. yeah yeah i mean i think you know i've been very fortunate to have a lot of support through the years and you know i think every now and again you get to a point where you just maybe meet a little bump in the road and you just don't know quite the direction or you maybe now want to go and offer albums but are just scared of taking that plunge and sometimes you just need somebody there that's that's been there done it and save them 
making the same mistakes, just like when I sold my business, you know, she yeah. wanted something ready made. So it was a fast track to success as opposed to a hurdle. Well, well, that's good news. So um, coming up shortly, we're going to, as you've already seen, um, Paul, a.k.a. Louise, Louise Toman is going to be joining us uh, uh, in, a, in just a couple of minutes. Um, Jane, thank you again. Okay. We are um, very, 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 you know, really, really grateful. Um, everybody, so watch out for what's going on within your trade area. Uh, there's going to be some, or and actually on the academia page, we're, we're going to update quite a lot going on there. We've got... Um, We've got uh, a new promotion that we're going to run for new customers and existing customers. So go to the academia page, go to your trade area, check that out too. Uh, if you haven't got ready to submit to the competition that we're, that we're running, please, please get, a, get, get your favorite best photograph that you could have submitted it to other competitions. It's absolutely fine. If you, if you, um, if you get ready, go to the link at 3.30 today, you can enter your photograph. It's, uh, it's an adult stroke family um, uh, uh, shoot, uh, big uh, photograph. So it's got to be of adults or, or teenagers. It can be of, of, of uh, children. It's just we don't have anybody there for newborns as such. So to go to the competition page as well so that we can actually so make sure for 3.30 today. Um, Paul Toneman with us in about a couple of minutes. So thank you so much, everybody. And we'll see you again shortly. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks, Jane.